Thank you guys. Oh, I just got the alert. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just really aggressive there, aren't we? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Um, hi, good evening. And thank you guys so much for inviting me into um, your guys' conversations. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect, um, but boy, was that really meaningful and empowering to just hear the last 30 ish minutes of you guys sharing kind of where you are in life right now. Um, I just want to say that each of you are so brave and so inspiring um, and so resilient. I mean, I, you know, I think every one of you mentioned something that's going on, but then you threw out, oh, it'll be okay. We'll figure it out. It'll, it'll pass. And, you know, that really shows a lot um, about one's character. So each of you should be so proud of yourselves and just remember how strong and how resilient you are. So thank you for sharing that um, in this space with me. So I'm very honored to be here. Um, so as you heard, my name is Ashley Hughes and I am the program manager um, at, a, at a nonprofit here in the Valley called the Teresa McCormick Center. Um, it is also referred to as TMAC for short because Teresa McCormick Center is a mouthful. And when you say it a lot, TMAC is just way easier to say, um, or if you're typing it, it's way easier to type. So we are a 501c3 registered nonprofit here in the Valley. Um, we sit on the Harry and David corporate campus, but we are totally separate from Harry and David. Um, we have our own board of directors, our own status, our own entity, everything. They are just very gracious and donate the space as well as some other things um, to really help us run the organization and be able to help people in the community. We are open to any and everyone. Um, you don't have to have any association with Harry and David, um, or you can be a longtime employee there. We're willing to help anyone and everyone that kind of comes through the doors and just say that they need help. Um, a little bit of history about us. So Teresa McCormick was a real person. Um, she worked on the Harry and David corporate campus way back in 2005. Um, and way back then, she saw this need. Um, all these employees, all these potential employees were coming in and they were ready to go to work, but they didn't have closed toed shoes to go to work or they didn't have coats to go into cold storage or out in the orchards so that they could begin their job. Um, so Teresa actually reached out to Deanne Everson at United Way here in, in the Valley and said, you know, you always talk about helping people. What's that about? Like, here's my issue. Can you help me? And Deanne said, well, let's figure it out. So they did a call on campus um, and they raised over 800 pairs of shoes in a very short amount of time for people to go back to work. Um, and they kind of just operated as like a, we have this need, let's try to fill it basis. Um, it was very random in this itty bitty tiny room on top of one of the old packing houses. Um, and, you know, Teresa was a really amazing human and she absolutely loved people and she loved helping people and her legacy lives on. Um, in 2007, unfortunately, Teresa passed away suddenly from a brain aneurysm at the age of 50. Um, so to Harry and David's credit, they said, this is way too great. We're helping a lot of people. Let's create a 501c3, become open to the public and name it after her. So that is when Teresa McCormick Center got its name um, or different variations of the name. It's always had Teresa McCormick in it. Um, so we became a 501c3 open to the public way back in 2009. Not many people know about us. Um, we are a two paid staff and then we are ran by volunteers. Um, Pre-COVID, we had about 40 volunteers that help us run our day-to-day -day stuff um, as well as just the two paid staff. And now since COVID, it's not really post COVID because I feel like we're still in it, but since COVID, um, we're down to about 20 volunteers um, that help us run day to day. And, you know, the needs are really higher now more than they ever have been. Um, so it's a humbling moment every single day that we walk into that office and we realize um, the needs are growing and we're just trying to keep up um, and keep those who have those needs served. Um, we have many different things for individuals. Um, we have a supplementary food bank. So individuals can come through right now. 
It is set up as like a drive-through food pantry, but you don't have to have a car to come through. You can walk through as well. It's just because of COVID and the limited staffing. We have everything kind of set up outside still because well, to be frank, if any of us get sick, it might wipe us all out. So <laughs> we're trying to stay open and just keep everyone as safe as we can. So we do have the supplementary food bank. Um, our food bank, we purposely kept it a supplementary one um, because if you're familiar with access and how food banks work through access, you can only go to those food banks 12 times a year. Um, and so that's one visit a month. And really with the way inflation is and groceries are right now, that isn't all that helpful, um, just with the cost of living. So we try to be in addition to that. So you can come through our food pantry twice a month, every month. Um, and honestly, if you needed more visits because something's going on, all it takes is a conversation and we'll make sure that you're getting food. Um, you know, we do call ourselves a supplementary food bank, which means we don't always know what's going to be coming in. But I promise you that these boxes um, are worth it. <laughs> we purposefully try to build them up um, with the random items that we get to make sure it's worth your visit. We are very lucky in a sense that I get a lot of like Harry and David cheese. Um, sometimes I get meat. Sometimes I get like fresh produce. So those are all like you know, really big pros that a lot of food banks don't get. Um, also with those really nutritious things, I get a lot of um, moose munch and chocolate cherries and all those non-nutritionist things. Um, but everyone deserves a treat. So we still send those out in the box. Um, and we, you know, we want to put a smile on everyone's face just as much as fill their stomachs. Um, so our boxes go out. Individuals can come in twice a month, like I said, we try to keep it very minimal red tape. Um, we have a very short one page form that we ask individuals to fill out when they show up. Um, it's very basic demographic information and we only ask this information because the IRS makes us. Um, if you check a box saying that you are in need, that is good enough for us. We're not gonna check your income. We're not gonna check your story. We don't really care. If you wanna come and get food from us or other things from us, that's good enough for us. All I need is kind of like your information so that I can report and say, hey, I'm serving this many people of this many demographics. We are legit. Um, none of your information gets shared with anyone. None of your personal information goes anywhere except for in our house, in our database. Um, and it's just so I can collect numbers. Your names, nothing like that goes to the IRS. It's just, you know, this many people live in Phoenix, this many people live in Medford, that sort of thing. Um, so we do try to keep it super minimal. Um, in addition to the food pantry, we do have a clothing closet. Um, we're still kind of trying to figure out what that looks like in the middle of COVID, <laughs> since COVID. Um, you know, pre-COVID, people could come in and shop for clothes every time that we were open. Now we're kind of doing on an appointment basis. Um, and we have to be super mindful about, you know, still wearing masks and just letting you in for a little bit of time. Again, you know, because volunteers are there out of the goodness of their heart and I have to keep everyone safe in order to keep my doors open. Um, so we do have the clothing closet. We have kids clothing up through, you know, seniors um, and we try to have all sizes. It is a little bit of a limited selection. We're not a goodwill by any means, um, but we do try to have items there. We also have like a hygiene closet as well as like some random bedding and towels and toilet paper and things like that so that if you do have an immediate need um we try to have some of those things on hand so that we can just give it to you in the moment instead of making you chase down these resources by going to a whole nother place um gas is expensive and i don't really want you to have to pay for any more than what you're already paying for so if we can do it in that one-stop shop that's our goal um so the food the clothing the hygiene slash miscellaneous stuff um we also do free tax preparation through our tax site, which is called VITA, V-I-T-A. It's Volunteer Income Tax, Income Tax, and I forgot what the A stands for, it's gone. Assistance, Income Tax Assistance, a very basic word. Um, individuals that make less than 55,000 in their household can come in and get their taxes done by preparers for free. Um, everything at the center is totally free, but the tax um, help specifically you know, it's 
it's really helpful um, for people who even have back taxes. Maybe you missed a year or you missed a few years and you need to file some of those. Um, we can help you get taken care of. We don't have the capacity of holding that all year round. We can only offer that from February. I think it's the first Monday in February through April 15th. Um, of course, sometimes it slides a little past that depending on what's going on, but we are there to help you during those months and it's by an appointment um, basis. We will soon be getting um, like a little scheduler that I can actually send Cass the link to and then she could send it out. And if you guys need tax assistance, um, you can click the link, set up your own appointment and come in and see us. Um, we have wonderful volunteers, including myself, that takes the um, IRS tax prep uh, test every single year and we get certified. Um, and I've personally been there for nine years and have been overseeing the program for nine years. So it's really great. You can tell your friends, your family. Um, there are some limitations in that because the IRS kind of dictates that for us. Um, so people that have um, self-employment over $10,000, we usually can't help that, but we will at least take a look and see if there is anything we can do um, or anyone that has like major losses. Um, so like uh, debt, debt forgiveness, um, things like that. It's always worth coming in and having the conversation with us. Even if we can't help you, at least maybe we can, you know, steer you in the right direction. Um, or, you know, sometimes we can make magic happen and pull things out of our hat. So <laughs> It's always worth the conversation in my opinion. Um, and then, so we have the food, the clothing, the hygiene, the VITA, tax assistance. We also have a bicycle program. Um, this again is ran by volunteer. And so my, you know, my little stockpile is kind of first come first serve as I get them fixed up. Um, but we do get bicycles in, we fix them up, they are used. And then we give them out to people for free who have no other means of transportation. So if you need, help getting to and from work or to and from appointments and the, you're not on the bus route or it's before the bus runs or after the bus runs, because um, we all know transportation in this valley is not friendly. Um, we try to get a bike for you so that you can get to and from places. Um, in addition to all of that, we also do referral um, for other needs that come up. So sometimes when you know, tragedy hits, you don't really know where to turn. Um, you don't know where all the help is in the Valley. Myself as, as well as, you know, my boss, my executive director, Amy Belkin, she and I are both very connected in the Valley and we try really hard to connect people with the resources that are available to them. So say one day, you know, some, you miss some work or something, and you're not going to make rent or you're not going to make your power bill. You can reach out to me and I'm happy to steer you in the right direction. I can say, oh, you know, Access can help with this. St. Vincent de Paul can help with that. Um, there's a random hidden program that can help with this. You know, there's all sorts of resources in the Valley, but it is really hard to navigate. And sometimes when you're under that stress, it's really hard to think outside of whatever is immediately going on um, to, to find those resources. So we're there and happy to help um, anytime and to help kind of guide you through. Say there's multiple things going on and you're trying to walk this you know, whole chaos of life and you just need to talk about it and to work through it, you know, we're there to help you through that. So those are all the immediate resources that we do. Um, you know, we try really hard to connect people um, and make sure that their needs are getting met. But in this valley, um, excuse me, in this valley, housing is difficult, as I know every single one of you know personally right now. Um, again, transportation is very difficult also in this valley. And so there are things um, that maybe we can't pull off right away, but we will certainly try um, and we'll certainly have the conversation with you. And if we can't help you, maybe we can find someone who can. Um, but at the very least, you know, we're here to listen and just hold the issue with you and, and try to make you feel a little less um, alone when the heart, the world is so hard right now. So that is about us. Are there any questions or anything I can maybe answer right now? Yeah, I guess. Can you put your uh, information in the chat? Sure. Like your phone number and things like that? Yes, I certainly can. Uh, one okay. thing to know, because the weather is getting crazy tonight or tomorrow or whatever, um, our food pantry outside 
when there's extreme weather, so like the snow and cold that's coming in on Thursday, there are times that will randomly not open and it's because of the weather and it's because I have to keep those volunteers safe. I'm not about to ask them to be out there in the snow um, or the extreme that. smoke or anything like that. So you can always give us a call if you wonder if we're going to be open or we have a Facebook page and we always make sure that we update there as well. It's Teresa McCormick Center, um, T-E-R, there's no H in Teresa. Um, but yes, I'll put my information in the chat. We always update the voicemail as well um, to reflect if we're going to be closed on a random day, just to make it a little easier for you guys. And hopefully you don't um, make a trip and we're not open for you. So thank you. Yeah. I'll give you a second to type before I ask my question. <laughs> I can multitask. Go for it. Okay, great. I was just wondering if you are on the Unite Us platform for accepting referrals. I don't think I am. I don't even know if I know exactly what that is. Okay, well, Ellie, I'm happy to be. <laughs> Ellie and or I will speak with you about it. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I'm totally happy to be, um, you know, being just to paid staff, I wear a lot of hats. Amy wears a lot of hats. Um, and if I'm being super honest, there are times that we have dropped balls um, unintentionally, but we're just trying to shift through. So if for any reason you reach out to me and you're not getting an answer for me, feel free to rattle my cage a little harder. Um, call me again. You can shoot me an email. Um, but yeah, just know that I promise I'm not trying to ignore anyone. Sometimes I just am getting behind. <laughs> Understandable. There's a yeah. lot more, more of us than you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, with Monica, you have a question? It's not a question. I just have a comment. I love Teresa McCormick. Oh. Right after the fire, I don't know what I would have done without the food and clothes and things that they helped me do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing that. That means so much to me. Thank you. You're gonna make me cry and this is recorded. That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I will deny, deny, deny. <laughs> uh, I wanna also say that um, there's a period in my life um, uh, during a, one of my recoveries where um, I had, it really is ideal, uh, Harry and David in the fall and Christmas and FTD in the spring and all that time off in between. It was really ideal. But I do remember the uh, uh, Teresa McCormick Center as being there and was uh, very happy to uh, go through and uh, particularly with your moose munch and things like that. So really appreciate your having been there. It was fun. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for making me not cry at least. <laughs> no, I didn't want to do that. No. <laughs> right. Does anybody else have a question or a comment? I do want to add that I'm impressed with all, I had no idea of how, the breadth of, of what you do. Um, so that's, thank you for being here and sharing that with us. Yeah, you're so welcome. And I'll send Cass um, a little flyer that kind of shows things and explains things too. So that way you guys can share with family and friends, um, especially come tax season. I mean, I think, honestly, I think that's our coolest um, resource that we have because it's really, uh, you know, AARP, I think runs a program through, I think they came back since COVID. I'm not exactly sure, but really trying to find tax help in this Valley is not very easy. And it's also very expensive. Um, so I, I really want that word to go out because we, we help quite a few and it's really important work. So. And when you put your contact information in the chat, I'll save it so I can share it with everybody. Did I not do it right? I don't see it there. Oh, it somehow went to a direct message. Oh. I'll go to everyone. No wonder people are like, I hope to see your number. And I'm like, I swear <laughs> I just wrote it. I, okay, so clearly I'm not tech savvy either for being a millennial. Let <laughs> oh, me try this again. Me. It'll come to everyone now. <laughs> Lots of people in this room can relate to not tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> Typing it now. <laughs> Okay, 
Just make sure I don't have any typos there. <laughs> Well, you must have just given such a thorough presentation. Nobody has a single question. <laughs> well, that was my goal. Yeah. Um, so as you'll see there, my direct, we have two phone numbers. My direct line is that 5098 number. Um, and then Amy Belkin, the executive director, is the other phone that exists there. And that's her number, the 5001. Um, there are times we can't answer in the moment, but if you leave us a voicemail, we work really hard to get that turned around within 24 hours. Don't hold me to that. There are times that I'm a little late, but um, yes, we do try to get back to you immediately. So cool. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you so much. I, I, before I leave, I wanted to, I forgot one thing. I don't know if you can see this or not. Yes. Uh, I got my COVID almost. I see the vaccine. I don't see what the, 19 yeah. there it is 19 <laughs> <laughs> okay so i i just want i don't know if people know about this but i've been going to the public health center on holly street in medford and it's like completely empty there's nobody in there you don't have to touch anything the doors open automatically so i mean you just go in sit down five minutes you go so it's very convenient if you haven't gotten your last one i know some people are waiting for the last one sounds like a good tip yeah what's it called again lorraine it's yeah. the public health department in medford it's on holly street great thank you yeah free <laughs> Oh, that reminds me, I was going to look up the address for that and share it. Um, I was going to also post information about the warming shelters, because that's pretty relevant right oh. now. Um, let me look up. Thanks, Cass. Yeah. <clears throat> I might be able to find some of that, too. 110 North Ivy Street. Did you it's say 110? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the CCR building. Oh, that's the public health department? No, no, that's the uh, uh, warming shelter. Oh, that that's one of them, yes. Okay, I'll do that first because I have those websites saved. I haven't looked up the public health department. Oh. Hey, Jose, is that one that you mentioned in Medford or Ashland or where is that one? That's in Medford. Medford. Yeah. That's the CCR. I thought I saw that for Ashland, it had been at the Pioneer Hall, but was moving to the Presbyterian Church. Right. They yeah. and, and I'm not sure about the current status of that one, but here is what I found online. A couple different links there for the the warming shelters. Um, yeah, the Ashland one is dependent on whether they have enough volunteers to run it. So it's kind of a to call and make sure it's open situation. Gotcha. So if we don't have any more questions, I'm just trying to figure out how long to record. <laughs> I don't want to miss any any question and answer situation. So I don't see anybody looking like they have a question. So I am going to stop recording. Actually, I'll pause.